Uh, and this is being talked about in government circles here and in Pakistan uh, uh, to to actually balkanize that whole area, Pakistan and Afghanistan. The two have to be seen together. And maybe the, the point is some people are talking about an, a, a Taliban state which would um, which would uh, go across the border between Afghanistan and, and Pakistan, so that it would the, it, it, the area would be easier to control, the same way that Yugoslavia was. And you can see that that's going on in Pakistan today. Well, it's interesting. The Pakistani well, government and that. Taliban militants uh, appear close to reaching an agreement, a headline we just had a few days ago, a ceasefire in the Malakan region of northern Pakistan under the deal. Um, the government said it would allow the region to be ruled under Islamic or Sharia law. The deal was announced on the same day that the Pakistani president said the Taliban is trying to take over the state of Pakistan. Paul Fitzgerald, you were trying to get a word in there. Uh, well, you know, this is, this is where the whole idea of the great game comes in. Uh, it's not a game for me, it's not a game for you or the Afghan people. But there's, the, there's been this kind of self-fulfilling prophecy that has, has occurred with Afghanistan from the very beginning, and, it, and it, it does appear to be happening again. I mean, first of all, the, uh, you know, from, from the time that the United States went in there in 2001, the, they went in there with an in, uh, inadequate number of troops. They, they certainly did not put enough money into for development, and the money that they said they were putting in for development never got there. And so as a result of that, now they turn around, the same people turn around saying, well, those Afghans, you know, they were never really uh, ready for democracy. That's ridiculous. That's not the case whatsoever. That's a self-fulfilling prophecy. And so w w when we were there in 2002, we also heard from people that al-Qaeda, um, that the Pakistani ISI was recruiting for al-Qaeda in the south, in the, in the uh, Kandahar area. And no one was doing anything about it. And people were very curious as to what exactly was going on, what the American policy w w was that was happening there. We were even asked at one point by some ISAF troops from some international security and assistance force uh, troops what exactly the American plan was uh, for Afghanistan. Now, what's interesting is, is that some information has just come forward uh, from the RAND Corporation, which indicates that the United States and the Pakistani army have not been targeting the central of Taliban control near Qaeda, that they completely left them alone, which means that they're there, their headquarters is there, and that they're there organizing and coordinating these attacks over the border. So if they're targeting Batula Massoud, what's the reason for that when they're not targeting, <clears throat> uh, the, uh, they're not targeting the, uh, the central headquarters of the Taliban near Qaeda? Well, is, interestingly, continuing questions. two weeks ago, I uh, spoke with former U.S. President Jimmy Carter. I asked him what he thought of President Obama's plan to send more troops to Afghanistan. This is what he said. Well, that's one area that I think I would disagree with uh, Obama as far as uh, a surge that would lead to uh, more intense uh, bombing of, uh, of Afghan villages and, uh, and, and, and centers and the, and the heavy dependence on military. I would like to see us reach out more to be accommodating and negotiate with, uh, the, with all of the factions in Afghanistan. I notice that Obama is also much cooler in his uh, assessment of, uh, of President Karzai than was George W. Bush and, and knows that he's not been effective. He's basically just governed uh, right around the capital city, and his brother is well known to be one of the major drug dealers. So I think that uh, to reach out to, to uh, offer a hand of friendship or accommodation, not only to the warlords, but even, though, even to those uh, radicals uh, in the Taliban who are willing to negotiate would be, a, would be the best approach than to rely exclusively on uh, major military force. And, and I, th I don't think there's any doubt that, that the General Petraeus and others that have made the assessment over there are telling Obama that this is a much more serious problem than uh, was previously thought, and also that a major surge, as was accomplished in, uh, in uh, Iraq, would, would only be effective if you could get the, the ones who are, are now opposed to U.S. forces to change their position and be more accommodating to our, to our presence. And, and with a future glimpse of when the United States uh, occupation would, would expire. So are you opposed to a surge in Afghanistan, President Carter? Well, if it's, if it's a surge of a military nature only, 
then I would be opposed to it. But I'm not convinced that that's what Obama wants. I'm not, I'm not convinced that that's what General Petraeus and others are recommending. I'm not privy to their secret uh, assessments that have been uh, now shared between them and President Obama. Gilles Darnsari, your response. Well, I think there was a lot of confusion uh, in what was said just before. I mean, uh, what is this game and world domination in Afghanistan? This is, this is totally, totally wrong, you know. Uh, the war in Afghanistan is, is, is not producing any uh, good effect for the United States. Uh, it's not from Afghanistan they are going to dominate Central Asia whatsoever. This war must uh, finish as soon as possible. Uh, because it's not uh, uh, winnable. That's, that's it, you know. Uh, when I'm saying that you should not negotiate no with the Taliban, it's because they are too strong. First, you have to build some kind of Afghan state and then exit. So, so I think we, we should be careful about not throwing a lot of uh, big, uh, big ideas like world domination and so on. I mean, it's much more simple than that. It's a war. Uh, that has never been funded correctly, uh, that Ronald Rumsfeld mismanaged totally. And now we are in a situation where we have to exit. So how do we exit? And we are not going to exit negotiating with the Taliban. That's, that's simple, I think. How are you going to exit? We are going to exit when uh, we have an Afghan state. That's why we should not play with the tribe and militia and all that. We should reinforce Kabul. Means if we want to, to send more troops in Afghanistan, it's in Kabul, around Kabul. One hour outside Kabul, there is no security. The Taliban are there. That's the major problem. If we are not able to secure Kabul, Kabul and the area around, we will not be able to exit Afghanistan. That's why sending, tro sending troops to the south is a mistake. Uh, we should send troops in Kabul, around Kabul first. Elizabeth Gould, your response. And can you also talk about what's, your, what's the message you'd like to send to President Obama? Well, I think that um, uh, Joint Chiefs Chairman um, General uh, um, Admiral Mike Mullen, I think, summed it up when he said, uh, we can get rid of the Taliban, we can get rid of al-Qaeda, we can do all kinds of things, but if we do not earn the trust of the Afghan people, we will lose Afghanistan. And I, I really do think that that is, that is probably the greatest um, summary of the true nature of the problem. We have to start orienting what's coming out of Washington to actually come out of what needs to be done in Kabul and stop satisfying Washington. We will leave it there, and I want to thank you very much for being with us, Paul Fitzgerald and Elizabeth Gould. Their new book is called Invisible History, Afghanistan's Untold Story, speaking to us from Boston. Kathleen Foster here with us in the Firehouse studio. Her film, Afghan Woman, A History of Struggle. Gilles de Ronsaro uh, is author of Revolution Unending, Afghanistan, 1979 to the Present, speaking to us from Washington, D.C. He's at Carnegie Institution for Peace, and that does it for our broadcast. Democracy Now! is produced by Mike Burke, Shreve Dokadu, Saren Mate, Angeli Comet, Steve Martinez, Nicole Salazar, Honey Massoud, Robbie Karen, Mike DeFilippo, Miguel Nogueira, Peter Curries are our engineers. Special thanks also to Becca Staley, Nick Gila, Hugh Grant, Angie Kiefer, Samantha Chambly, Jason Noor, John Randolph, Jose Moran. And Laura Chipley, Travis Collins, Kieran Krug Meadows, Rakan Penny, Vesta Gadars, and Robbie Afghani. Our website is democracynow.org. There you can sign up for our headlines and for our news alerts. On Thursday night, I'll be doing a fundraiser for the Beacon High School, a public high school here in New York. You can go to our website for details. I'm Amy Goodman with Anjali Comet. Thanks for joining us.